All right. So uh, the next thing I want to discuss is the film that is out by or coming soon to theaters from Ken Loach. Uh, very well known. Um, he's now in his, I think, early 80s. He's been making films for a long time. And this movie, The Old Oak, that premiered at Cannes Film Festival, uh, but didn't get a chance to talk about this or I didn't make a point of discussing it yet, it was definitely overtaken. And I wanted to spend my time talking about Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Martin Scorsese and the centering of indigenous people. And you can find the earlier segment that I did on that, uh, especially if you're a member of the channel, I highlighted the representative, the person who represents the Osage, who was brought there to be part of the conversation. But here we have a movie that's about building solidarity. And that's the main story for this week. And to consider filmmaking that is intended to uplift, you know, a, a group of oppressed people, a group of people who are engaged in a struggle for justice. And there are several films that come to mind that are similar to this. But first, let me just establish that the story for this film is about a pub that is in Northeast England that is in a neighborhood that has fallen on uh, bad times. It's this is a zone that's turning into a kind of human sacrifice zone. The people no longer have the mines where they were working and what's going to be the driver of industry and employment in the uh, neighborhood. It's no longer a place of prosperity. And then meanwhile, you have the Syrian refugees who have come to the country, uh, to the United Kingdom, who are moving into this neighborhood and moving into these homes because they're cheaper. And so I think that adds to the neglect uh, the disinvestment, these are people who are seen as uh, not as important because for the government, these aren't really British people. So uh, they're left there to live in these homes. So you have um, an impoverished neighborhood and then you've got the old oak. And I think that there's something going on around trying to save this. It's the last remaining pub in this town that we're in. And so... I was thinking about the uh, movie, different movies that are out there and solidarity building. And I was thinking that, you know, what are some movies that are from the last 10 or 20 years, really important films that are built around solidarity? Sorry to Bother You from Boots Riley is one. And it's a anti-capitalist story. Uh, with some surrealism mixed into it. Very effective in its storytelling, I, I believe. And then we have other films that are like that, like Two Days, One Night from the Darden Brothers is, is it was really when it has Marine Co Marion Cotillard in it. And there's a there's a unionization theme. There's a theme of, um, of going on strike. Uh, it's a bit of that in Sorry to Bother You as well. Uh, 1954 film, a classic, Salt of the Earth, that's about Mexican workers at a zinc mine. That's another example of a solidarity film. And I think that's what's going when Ken Loth Loach made this movie. I think that's what this movie is about, The Old Oak. I have him here and I have his queued up. And the, this is the origin of the film. This is him describing the origin of Old Oak and. Um, how they came to make this film. So we'll play this and listen to what Ken has to say. Uh, and then I'll give some comments. Well, the, the origin of the film was um, having worked in the, in the Northeast for two films, we saw the areas that were most deprived, most neglected with a strong industrial past, with the solidarity that industrial struggles bring, and yet now left abandoned. And we also saw the, 
refugees from the Syrian war coming to being placed in areas where they would not be seen um, and the northeast per head of population had more Syrian refugees than anywhere else in the country but they had the least in infrastructure in work in social services why why is that because the government doesn't want you to know they're there even so on that basis we Paul and I thought and Rebecca thought there might be a film here that's him describing the research that went into the film and um, Paul um, is the screenwriter for it and he's Irish and you might know that Ken Loach made a, a fabulous movie called The Wind That Shakes the Barley that covered the IRA and some of that struggle there, the split, the fissure that existed and the resistance to, um, Brit to, to Britain. And so, uh, you know, he's, he's one that his movies really get in there, dig in there, um, and they're not just about organizing and, and, and left struggles, but they're also about the conflicts and the differences that people might have as organizers. Um, and in this, you know, in this movie, we have uh, the people in the pub and they're discussing, there's some clips that are out there on YouTube if you're interested in um, a little bit more from Old Oak. Uh, and, you know, they're sitting there and talking about the different parts of their neighborhood that are being sold off, uh, some of the exploitation, uh, the parasites, the fucking parasites, as they say, that have come into their neighborhood. Um, and then, you know, here they are, there's some kids, they're seeing uh, donations, a bicycle donated to a Syrian refugee. Um, you've got some working class boys that are there um, who are not Syrian, who are wondering uh, why the Syrian refugee girl is getting a bicycle and they're not getting a bicycle. So we have some really good examples of the different resentment that is bred by the way that capitalism is hollowing out an entire area and people are struggling to get by. Um, so I have another clip to play for you where Ken Loach speaks to the uh, politics the politics of the UK, the I think the uh, who speaks to the tensions and the conflicts that exists. Uh, this person out in the audience asks him to speak about that struggle to build solidarity and how uh, hope could be found given the issues that exist politically in not just the UK, but all of Europe. And I would say that the answer that Ken gives to this question is one that I can apply to the way things exist politically in the United States as well. I can, I think it's the case, the different instances in, in different European countries, I think, the political situation. Um, our situation in Britain is that we have a right-wing party in government, the Tory party, and we have a right-wing party in opposition called the Labour Party. Um, and they're very close to each other. Um, you could put a cigarette paper between them, just about. But they, neither of them will challenge the essential contradictions of the system that will continue to pro bring inequality, poverty, great wealth on the one hand, deprivation and hunger on the other. The system creates it, and they will leave the system in place. It also, it also leads to wars where they defend their spheres of influence. And our illegal war in Iraq, which should bring sh shame to those who, 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 who supported it and, and instigated it, Tony Blair should be in front of the war crimes tribunal in The Hague, not making millions from his lectures. And Bush as well. And that created a huge refugee problem. And that destabilized that region. And the refugees 
of course, are a part of that. And yet when the refugees come to us, particularly in Britain, we say, no, the door's closed. We don't want you. And that's the problem. So to make the changes we need, we need a, a, a government that, that gives power to the, to the people in terms of ownership, of services, production, that, so that we use the world's resources for our mutual benefit, not for big corporations to make profits and declare war around the world by the politicians who act in then for them. So that's a huge change. And building that opposition, spent a lifetime trying, <laughs> engaged in that sort of, in one way or another, as we all have. And so, it's, but, but I think at the moment, I think there's such a disillusion with those right-wing politicians. And I know we see it in France, and there's a, a massive movement against, against Macron. And we have massive campaigners and organizers against the, <clears throat> the, polit the politics of our country. It's a question of organizing it, focusing on a program, and acting internationally with solidarity. It's a huge task. It's the same, it is an eternal struggle. But now we have an end game, because if we don't do it, then the climate disaster is waiting for us. So for me, I feel very, um, I feel very anxious about the possibility of organizing that opposition. But you, you can't give up hope, because if you give up hope, as Paul wrote in the film, you, you are impotent, you can't do anything. But it's a massive, th th I think, I mean, we can talk about this all day. I, th I think that, 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 that that's the essence of it, is organizing a political opposition that will, trans that will change the economic system, because that's at the heart of everything. That drives everything. It drives the poverty and inequality and great wealth, the yachts in the harbor, and it also drives the wars of intervention and the expansion of NATO, for example, to hem in Russia so that they inevitably, we know without supporting Putin, we know what they will do. So I think that that's the problem, organizing the opposition. So uh, first, let me say thank you to you, Kat, for your Super Chat donation. I really appreciate it for the show. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for those of you that are here to watch, that's Ken Loach, he's a filmmaker, and you're watching him at Cannes Film Festival. He was there a couple, a few weeks ago, and that was the premiere of Old Oak, which we've been talking about. Um, and he was expelled from the Labour Party. So for those in the United States, it's like being expelled from the Democratic Party, which there's nothing really to save in the Democratic Party anymore, but there's also nothing to save in the Labour Party in the UK. If you want to watch something remarkable that takes the mask off this, as Ken Loach described, right-wing party, watch the Labour Files on Al Jazeera English as they document how the Labour Party has devolved and what it's doing. So he was expelled and he's no longer able to be part of this but it's a historical party and it's a party in which there had typically been left members that were allowed to be a part of it and campaign for election. And many of those people have been purged for the way that they think, including their opinions toward Israel, the Israeli occupation of Palestine, their opinion of the different wars and interventions that Ken Loach is calling out there. So he brings that in there. And I think it's good that the story sounds like one as we follow these characters that isn't just speaking to the domestic issues, but having those Syrian refugee characters means that they can discuss what Western uh, European countries and the United States together are doing to destabilize the Middle East and Northern Africa and how that's leading to refugee crises that are not appropriately attended to or uh, when they do rear their ugly head, uh, what they lead to is uh, basically right-wing responses. That's all about keeping people out and not giving them homes. When they really don't have any place to go, the reason they fled was because uh, 
the US, UK, these European countries were in some way or shape or form involved in ruining the places in which they lived. So don't they have some responsibility to take care of those people? And then that goes up against the disinvestment in working class people that is there all along the income inequality that exists. So I'm anxious to see this movie when it comes out. So I'm going to wrap up here and just say that I'm still following the writer's strike and the director's guild is having a vote. Uh, are they going to accept the deal with the Alliance for Motion Pictures? I've also been watching the Screen Actors Guild ne negotiations, interested in whether uh, what they're going to do, their contract is up at the end of the month. They've authorized a strike. We can have two of the three potentially out on strike, two of the three main unions. But also if the directors reject that deal and then they don't have a contract, maybe all three end up on strike. There's still a potential for all of that to happen and it'll be a huge moment. They're resisting the rise of artificial intelligence and that technology's impact on the industry. Uh, they wanna make sure things are guarded against what could happen. Uh, it will preserve jobs, uh, fighting for a, a living wage. Some of these are universal struggles that we see in all of the labor unions throughout the world. And then some of these are about preserving that creativity and artistic uh, freedom and all of that that is necessary of, of not being replaced by robotic uh, engineers or whatever uh, that are going to rely on machines rather than people to tell us these stories that many of us enjoy. Many of us spend our weekends or our nights watching as we take a break from the daily grind. And so thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'll, I'll do more to cover on that. I'll have more on some of the upcoming new releases for the summer and into the fall. And I will be here again next week at the end. Uh, probably we'll do a show on Friday. Uh, I like Friday or Saturday. So I do a show on this channel that is about uh, whistleblowing, press freedom, some of the other stories that catch my attention. I'll do that in the middle of the week. And then at the end of the week, either on Friday or Saturday, you can expect a live show. I'll schedule it so you can watch it. I'll like to flip back and forth between Friday and Saturday so we can give people different opportunities to see the show. Some people have things that are engagements that they have to do on Friday. Maybe they can only see Saturday. If they have things going on their weekend, they can only get around to the Friday show in the late afternoon. Then you know, here it is. And of course it archives and people can watch it. My movie recommendations do become member only videos. And then uh, the main story is available to everyone. So thank you all for tuning in to the movie brat this week. Um, and I will talk to you next week, but until that time, watch something good, watch something that makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. And I will see you next week.